VR obviously is a theme that keeps coming up uh, outside of Google, you know, all over the place. And then within Google, you know, we've got the kind of the cardboard that that kicked it off a couple of years ago. Uh, last and year, and it should be noted that they put a cardboard in the gift, the goodie mm -hmm. bag. So the oh, existing so you cardboard. Oh, up your goodie. Oh, bag. I didn't. Liam did, but oh, okay. uh, I, I keep. Yeah, when you get your things. badge, you get right. a bunch of. IO stuff and they put a, a new cardboard in. So it's yeah, not, they're not going to hand it to us at the event on the way out the, of it's the uh, keynote. <laughs> yes. Is it a different cardboard or? Um, it's the newest version. I don't right. know. I don't know what version they're up to right. yet, but it's the newest one. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So VR is going to be big. I think it's. Uh, I mean, everything that we, yeah. especially with all the attention that Oculus and Vive and all the other stuff have been doing in it, I, I think there's no way. There's no way there's not going to be a large portion of VR, especially with YouTube announcing. You know. Uh, YouTube VR support on iOS. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. It's, well, they're streaming the keynote yeah. in, in, in 360, immersive 360, yeah, exactly, 360 degrees yeah. through yeah. that YouTube um, capability. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of kind of sources uh, here and there have said a standalone headset, that Android VR, as the effort is supposedly called, um, would involve a headset that doesn't rely on a device the way a Gear VR does, that doesn't rely on being tethered to a computer but that's kind of standalone. But then I've read some things that are like, yeah, that's not going to happen tomorrow. So I don't even know where, you know. It seems like that's hard to accomplish, right? I mean, uh, you know, the Vive or the Oculus, those take some pretty heavy-duty hardware to run. So what's Google going to be able to create that can run on some sort of cheap device that doesn't yeah, require a $2,000 It doesn't really scale because it's locked into the, the, the hardware standalone itself. hardware. Probably not going to be as, you know, if, if this is the case, probably wouldn't be as impressive or as high powered as, like you say, the uh, the Vive or the Oculus. Wouldn't compete with that. Peter Rojas, of course, kind of confirmed as much on Twitter, I think, a week ago, saying it's going to be, something is going to be announced at Google I.O. for sure. And, you know, every, everybody's telling me that uh, it's not nearly as powerful as the Vive. Yeah, and I think Oculus, you, you run I, into processing yeah. power. But then again, I mean, like the optimist of me, the, the, the one who likes to be surprised and dazzled, did we ever see the Chromecast coming? No. You know, like a, a, yeah. a dongle that goes in a TV and can do, like, it seemed like magic when it came out. So I wouldn't put past And people. at a super cheap price point exactly. and yeah. does a lot. So it's a good point. Yeah. I've, I get the feeling that with cardboard, Google's aim was to, like, get as many people into VR as possible just so it moves faster. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I'm actually hoping for Android VR to just be, like, a mode of Android Mm -hmm. Like just the operating system, but in VR. Yeah. Right. And so, they are talking about that. I think that's almost for sure is that VR will be built into Android N. Wow. That that's going to be a first class citizen in Android. That that seems to be writing on the wall. Well, they did some they did some hirings. Uh, I can't remember who exactly it was, uh, but it was like, I don't know, I remember reading this news six or eight months ago. Somebody who specifically, you know, was hired to the VR team that had a very heavy kind of like UI uh, background. So, you know, that kind of hints at tailoring, uh, let's say, Android, for example, in the VR space and how right. that looks and mm -hmm. makes I want sense. to see that, too. I want to see, yeah. like, the mundane details of Android, right. like the notification shade and the launcher and stuff. Like, what is that <laughs> virtual reality? I imagine, like, mm -hmm. cheesy, like, 90s movies where... Like you're you're diving inside of the code. And yeah, I like want, I'm I inside want, Android I now. I want green numbers and letters falling <laughs> yes. slowly I'm around. Imagining <laughs> even like either you pull with both hands to get the notification shade down, or you have like one of those uh, like uh, slowly, like a like a window pull. Yeah, to, like, lower the shade down. <laughs> oh, I like it. Um, although I don't know about long term if I would like that very much, but uh, certainly an immersive uh, way to use an an operating system. Different from anything we would have seen. So, okay, so Android VR probably going to happen to some degree, uh, you know, and Google's confirmed at the existence of Android VR on their developer side. There have been little kind of happenings over the past couple of weeks where it's like, okay, this, too, this is happening too many times for it not to be a thing. So I'm sure we'll see some of that. Uh, Tango, Project Tango. Very interested to see what's going on here. I kind of thought that their VR stuff was going to, Hinge on Tango to a certain degree. They were going to merge into some yeah. similar path, yeah. I don't but know. I don't know yeah. if that's necessarily what what people are hearing. It's mm -hmm. it's a little bit more about kind of Tango's original vision, which was mapping the interior world to a certain degree. But beyond that, uh, kind of taking the Google Maps approach and allowing people to use the Tango to map the world and then share that out so that everybody has access to those things from Google's cloud. Uh, that sounds very cool. Working with Intel, Lenovo, uh, both on board. Lenovo is actually expected to show off 
it's Tango Hardware next month at an event it's doing. And uh, yeah, but I mean, but it also kind of sounds like VR applications can be applied here if that helps kind of move that technology along. Do you think Tango technology is mainstreamable? I'm not sure. And it's kind of a little different than VR. It's more AR, right? Yeah. Like it's right. more about kind of not replacing your world, but augmenting your world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I do have an existing Tango tablet and it's not great. Like a couple of years ago. Was it yeah. last year? Yeah, that I mean, well, they've only yeah. had one, yeah. I think. Um, I remember that. Yeah, it just had that. was more exciting in promise than in actuality. Right. Um, but that may be just the t age of the technology. Well, I think even when it came out, it was running an old version of the Yeah, I mean, it's OS. still running 4.4, yeah. the Tango tablet I have, <laughs> you know, so I, I think I should, I'm not sure so about that. So anything's an improvement, basically. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> All right, are you excited about anything in the Tango front? I mean... Um, I'm still not 100% sure what Tango is actually for. Yeah. Like 3D mapping, I guess to the VR point, like, like if you have a 3D map of some faraway place, then you could look at it in VR. Mm -hmm. and be there mm -hmm. um ar sure but like on a on a consumer device like your phone i mean it would basically be a window into something you're already seeing with right overlaid stuff so i, I will really know. i will say last year at google io uh where they had the tango kind of on display and they had it mounted into a big uh you know controller a gun controller and you had this whole space and basically the tango mounted on top like like your viewfinder and so the entire world that you were playing in Seems and everything like that, that you were you know you were moving around the real space and as you were moving around it, that was a really cool experience mm -hmm. uh certainly opened my eyes to kind of the gaming possibilities of something like uh tango and then when you, you can take see that, getting those out into the world yeah uh kind of getting developers to have those could create a lot of data and a lot of like well, yeah. mapping the world like they say so like i think that's getting a big these part of it. out into the world i think I, I don't know. I do think, I mean, I'm pretty sure we will see Tango at IO, but I do think there's going to be a push for that to like make this more mainstream and make it, they probably don't know what it's for yet, like Liam said, mm -hmm. but it's probably about time to let, you know, this go out into the world and figure out what it's for. But they <laughs> but they know how, um, how valuable Google Maps are to the company. Mm -hmm. And I think this is the ability to go inside. Uh, to yeah. the same degree. That's mm -hmm. a big part of it. I like the idea of developing a technology that they don't really know what it's for. <laughs> Google yeah, does this, this a lot. We, we can do it, <laughs> but yeah, we don't know what the application is going to be. I think that's that's really interesting. So. Yeah. Um, and also just the thought of, you know, Tango devices, gaming. I, I wonder to what extent the, the computations that it's doing in order to effectively deliver you this immersive gaming experience, how much of that data is being used, sure, for the game that you're playing, but also, hey, well, we had to move, map your room in order to do it, and now we've got that data too. Like, it's kind of an interesting. Well, it's, it's almost like the when I, whenever we talk about AR, VR, AR, whatever, I always go back to the uh, example of uh, uh, the movie Joaquin Phoenix, Spike Jones, uh, uh, her, her, right. where he's play, he's playing a game that projects are all around the room, as opposed to going into the world. The world is becoming your world, and I always found that really fascinating. And maybe that's a step towards that as well too. Yeah. Really neat, so. Right. Right.